In this video, I'll introduce a mathematical fractal known sometimes as the snowflake fractal, and then we'll calculate its dimension. So the snowflake fractal, like many fractals as we'll see, is made by an iterative process. So we start with a single dot. And then at every step, I'm going to take the shape that I have, make four copies of it, and place it on the corners. So here's my initial phase. And then the next phase, I'm going to take um, four copies of this original dot and put them here. One, two, three, four. OK, so that's the first step. Now I'm going to iterate that step. The next step, I'm going to take this shape, all five dots, make four copies and place them here. One, two, three, four. So here, I'll do that. There's copy one. There's copy two. Copy three. and copy four. So um, the next phase, next step, I would take this shape. There are, let's see, one, two, three, four, five times five, 25 dots here. And I would make four copies and put one up here, one up here, one down here, and one down here. And I'll keep doing that, and I'll keep doing that, and we would get a fractal. If we carry out this process for a few more steps, we'll end up with a shape that looks like this. And we can see that this is a fractal. It's a self-similar object. It's this cross or X shape, and the X is made up of X's, which are made up of X's, which are made up of X's, and so on. So we see this same X or cross shape appearing again and again at many different scales. So it's a fractal. By the way, I should mention that although I refer to this as a snowflake fractal, um, it only sort of looks like a snowflake, because snowflakes have six arms and not four. <clears throat> but nevertheless, it reminds me of snowflakes, so I call it a snowflake, fact, the, uh, snowflake fractal. I don't think it has a 100% standard name. OK, so in any event, we want to know what's the dimension of this. And we'll do like we did for that triangle example and the other examples before. Look at small copies and the large copy and so on. So to do that, we will, again, use our dimension equation. The number of small copies in an object is a magnification factor, or the stretch factor, raised to the d power, where d is a dimension. And here is um, another view of the process of creating this fractal. We started at the zeroth step with a single square. I drew it as a dot originally. <clears throat> and then we go here, and then this is step two, and this is step three. So let's see. Uh, number of small copies. Let's look at this picture. So number of small copies. I see one, two, three, four, five. So the number of small copies is 5. What's the stretch factor or the magnification factor? Well, that's 3. And so to see that, um, imagine this shape. How much would we have to stretch it so it was this long? Well, we can see that um, this length is made up of 1, 2, 3 of those. So the stretch factor is 3. This one is a third the size of the big one. So the magnification factor is 3, and that gets raised to the d power. So now the question is, what's the dimension d? Well, let's see. Could the dimension be 1? Let's, let's try. I'll plug it in. 3 to the 1 is 3. Hmm. That's not 5. Could the dimension be 2? Let's see. I'll plug it in. 3 squared. 3 squared is 3 times 3. That's 9. That's too big. So this object is, does not have a dimension of 1. It does not have a dimension of 2. 
it turns out that the dimension is between 1 and 2. And so in order to solve this equation for d, remember d is the dimension that's what we're interested in, we're going to have to use logarithms. Yep, logarithms. So now it's probably a good time for me to remind you that there's an optional section in this unit that reviews exponents and logarithms. There's not a lot of algebra in this course, but exponents and logarithms are going to come up a lot. And you can already see why. The dimension, this important way of characterizing fractals, as we'll see, is an exponent. So we're going to need to know about exponents. And logarithms are used to solve equations when the unknown is upstairs in an exponent. So exponents and logs kind of move back and forth. So you'll need to be fairly facile with basic exponent and log properties. It's not that big a deal, and I review them in that optional section. So if you're at all uncertain about logarithms or if what's about to follow uh, doesn't make sense, check out that review section and you'll be fine. And remember, you can also um, always ask for help in the form if there's something you're um, un unsure about. Okay, back to the fractal. So here's the situation. We have this equation, 5 equals 3 to the d, and would like to solve for d. So to do so, we'll take the logarithm of both sides of this equation. So log 5 equals log 3 to the d. So then by the um, logarithm property for exponents, log 3 to the d is the same thing as d log 3. So log 5 is equal to d log 3. Then the last step is to solve for d. So I'll just divide both sides of the equation by log 3, and I'll end up with this. Log 5 over log 3 equals d. So that's my answer. That's an exact expression for um, the dimension d. And we can get a number out of this with a calculator. So let's see, I've got to do log 5 over log 3. So here's my trusty calculator. And I'll do 5 logarithm divided by 3 logarithm. And they get approximately 1.465. So that tells me that d is approximately 1.465. So, we found that the dimension of the shape is not an integer. It's a number between 1 and 2. That's kind of weird. We're not used to um, non-integer dimensions. And we'll talk a bunch more later in this unit and throughout the course about what this means. But for now, let's, let's keep our head down and keep uh, sort of working with uh, this basic equation for the self-similarity dimension. So in the next video, I'll work through another example calculating the self-similarity dimension d for a fractal, and then you'll get to practice this in a couple of quizzes.